Typical sand dredging on a large vessel took place in depths up to 50 meters at half to one knot speed. Two drag heads could suck up around 120 cubic meters a minute, taking about an hour to completely fill the hopper. Typical journey time from the Barrow area to dump site could vary between 30 minutes and two hours, depending on which area was used. Dumping procedure aboard all vessels was computer controlled. With the bottom doors open, water jets fluidized the sand, enabling the hopper to be emptied within 15 minutes. Blasting was a daily event. All in all, the project was to consume 38 million kilograms of ammonia nitrate fuel oil, or ANFO, supplied by Dino West Farmers. To open a typical face, 50 holes of 200 millimeters each were drilled at precise intervals. was sized and most used as landfill. Unweathered or high-grade rock was used in a number of applications. One was to provide a stable foundation for the runways. Another was to size the rock by crusher and use it for seawall construction. Other large rocks ranging in size from half a ton to seven tons were used for seawall armor. To prevent the final sand capping on the runways from migrating into the rock base, over five million square meters of geotextile had to be laid. A ribbon cutting ceremony attended by executives from both the PAA and APCJV marked the bridging of the gap between Lam Chow and Cheplap Kok, which was completed on schedule. By mid-1994, Cheplap Cock was almost completely flat. Very little of the original landscape was left, and some of the dredges were being decommissioned. Also flattened were the Two Brothers Islands, now no more than platforms rising out of the sea. By early 1995, the majority of the dredges had completed their work and moved on to other projects around the world. On the land side, however, work continued unabated, for there was still the seawall left to complete. Many of the drivers were now approaching their 600th working shift, and the end of the project was nearly in sight. In total, the trucks had worked 1,600 shifts and had been driven 12.5 million kilometers, wearing out nearly 2,000 tires. In the closing days, there was even more to reflect on. Although this was the largest infrastructural project ever undertaken in Hong Kong, and the largest of its kind in history, it had been completed without major difficulty and well ahead of schedule. More than 2,000 people from 16 nations and over 40 major companies had all contributed to the final success of this billion US dollar project. Even the trailer dredgers and crews had sailed a remarkable 40 times around the world and had moved over 240 million cubic meters of mud and sand. Finally, on the 16th of June, 1995, a completion ceremony was held aboard a ferry cruising offshore. Guests included many of those involved in the project. 
The financial secretary of Hong Kong, Sir Hamish MacLeod, set off a charge breaking up the last bench left on the island. Barely a handful of the cat dump trucks remained to move the final loads of material. Most had been dismantled and shipped overseas. So there would be some memento of the project, the artist Louise Soloway was commissioned to sculpt a bas-relief of her impressions of Cheplap Cock. The artwork combined a unique vision of the men and machines that had completely transformed this once tranquil island into a gigantic platform for one of the world's most modern and passenger-friendly airports.